guess, then let's get this started. So, did you see the article about the mom who dropped off her kids on the side of the road? Sadly, that's so, that's so, shoot that lady. Well, apparently she thought that was a legal way to, uh, get rid of her kids. Kind of like you can drop the, uh, infant off with another adult. No, um, people like that don't deserve children. I totally agree. Um, well, the kids are now in custody because the school called CPS, naturally. Um, I don't know. I just find that appalling, and of course I don't I, I get personally it. think, hey look at Koran, I'm gonna read that. Did you really find one? I did. And the Torah. Oh, <laughs> I'm rolling in dough. I'll, I'll burn that philosophy textbook down. Oh, or another Torah. I'm gonna create a big Torah pile. Like Mikey with the, with the panties. I'm gonna mm -hmm. make a Torah. This is gonna be glorious to go to. Um. Well, in other news, GSVU bans alcohol from fraternities for safety reasons. <laughs> That's glorious. Well, no one's gonna abide by it. Well, well, yeah, but it's still funny. It's <laughs> it, it's just oh, stupidity. We're it's... gonna we're gonna no, because that's just gonna make more people do it. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's like just congrats, you just made something more popular. Well, yeah, because there's now a stigma about it. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, only the cool people drink. Mm -hmm. I do want to preference this. This does not include small groups, and this does not include you sitting around with your roommate. Yeah, just in fraternities. So, uh, Mikey's still fine if he would have... Because you know he's not part of any. Well, yeah, but he's too lonely. <laughs> That's but... <laughs> true. And then, um... Apparently, school counselors are saying we're overusing the word bullying now. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And they of... are. Well, everything's bullying, according to them. I do remember going to school, and, uh, yeah, they were using that word too much. Um, my thing is, like, when you look at some videos of kids on college campuses, asking out a girl is bullying her now. I'm like... I think that's a bit extreme. Yeah. No, I like how the model for an amputee still has an arm. Look at my look at my arm, Dakota. Look at my arm. Yeah. Look at my arm. Some zombie took it. Uh, yeah, but they they use that word way too much. Like, oh, someone pushed you down on the playground. Oh, bullying. Yeah, it's. It's just stupid how we have to be so sensitive to every little thing imaginable. Yeah. Ooh, Zambies. Dakota, there's Zambos. I'm not saying I'm a racist, but them filthy Zambos. Ooh, uh, not good, not good. They break one of our doors? Oh, Wait. that racist. He's dead now. Oh, I, I ran out of butter knives. Equip Equip that butter knife. Yes. Why does butter a crowbar knife. have a knife. baseball texture? Because this game isn't complete. Zombies. This one's blonde. Welcome to the Aryan race. <laughs> Yo. Um. If you notice, most of the zombies are white, so. I'm just saying. Well, I mean, we are in the suburbs. This is classically white territory. Yeah, filthy white people. We need to reclaim it in the name of the black people. Um, I guess on to the bigger stuff. The November the what? The bigger stuff. The November election is coming up. Oh, that's not fun to talk about, though. Well, I mean, um, it turns out. Well, naturally, from uh, with TV8, they're rooting for Democrats. Well, obviously. 
But, um... Aren't they owned by NPR? I actually don't know. I'm pretty sure they're owned by NPR. What I do know is, um... They give all the odds of the Democrats taking each house in the Senate, I believe they needed nine seats to get a majority. And it's gonna apparently be a lot easier than the House. Mm, no, sounds good. It. Yeah, because in the House, the Republicans have 63 seats, and the Democrats have uh, one seat. And there is one vacant seat in both houses, apparently. Go I don't know if you've looked outside. I'm too busy in the kitchen. I mean... I am surrounded just swinging my bat. You should probably not be in the kitchen then. And I know that's where we belong, but... I just gotta... <laughs> hey, I'm a male character, I hope you know. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Yo, I know. Gender's meaningless, Dakota. Didn't you know? Ooh, well, some crackers on a cracker. Of course it is. In other Dakota, news... I just want a cracker on a cracker. In other news, why I hope the Democrats don't get the House or the Senate. Kind of because I don't want to turn into California and New York here. But um. Oh yeah, we're gonna get up, we're gonna set up some sanctuary cities, man. I, I thought we had only one, but. Yeah, it's Dearborn, and it's like the rape capital of Michigan. <laughs> Naturally, what else would it be? It's like, of course, that's what we have. Or Michigan. Um. But this guy can win his election with only his one write-in vote. He failed to get county commissioner. So instead, uh, he was competing against this uh, guy. But old uh, bride man, he died at 74. So now there's no one to contest him, and it's too late to file the run for the office. So he's just one. He needs to get one vote. That's it. Well, Dakota, go vote for him. Sorry, I don't live in this county. Uh, Santin, Michigan? I don't even have a clue where that's at. I've never heard of it. And I live in Michigan. <laughs> Same. Just docks to myself. Um... So, apparently it's a mail carrier position, and I guess good for him. I wish it was that easy to get uh, political offices all the time. Oh, yeah. Well, said, you have two said you have two people running, and both of them are racist. <laughs> well, did you see the Steve commercials all over YouTube? Uh, I haven't. Well, they're like, uh, they give the most stereotypic of the worst, uh senator or house representative possible and they're like remember vote down ticket because if you don't this is how you get me oh i did see that that was pretty glorious actually yeah i mean there is kind of some truth to that and i wish people did take our state elections more serious yeah i mean that's the whole thing with starship troopers they had to go to each probably run from there why we got a horde coming Oh, I mean, it's the same horde. We didn't kill him. Oh. We're, kind of, we're kind of bad at that whole thing. <laughs> we are. Well, it's kind of hard to read articles and play. Yeah, well, you know, you got to manage it, Dakota. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I guess I do. Ooh, a two-story yeah. house. All of these places are very bad because there's tons of zombies, and I ran out of butter knives. Cody, you wouldn't happen to have a butter knife laying around, would you? No, I got a baseball bat. Ooh, a screwdriver. And a head trimmer. Ooh. I can equip it in both hands. I'm missing a hand. <laughs> anyway, um, I actually agree with the message of the Steve commercial. At first, I thought it was just trying to hate on some Republicans, so I ended up skipping it completely. And then the second time I watched, I'm like, oh, it's just trying to get people to vote in general. Yeah. Vote well, Libertarian, the only part of it. Slightly, you know. Well, we only care because we're a third party. Let's be real. If we, 
uh, became a established primary party in Michigan, will become just like the rest because power corrupts. And that's coming from a libertarian. That is kind of funny. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta look at the obvious. The libertarian stance. We're boned. <laughs> you know, so the first, uh, the people who get us to be in primary party, you could probably count on them to be pretty decent. After that, once we have the primary party status, we'll be infiltrated just like the Democrats and Republicans with people who don't care about the party values and just want power. Sounds right. So, do you know anything about the three proposals on our ballot? I actually don't, because I don't care about the, Repub the Libertarians. Because screw them, motherfucker. This has nothing to do with the Libertarians. Proposal 1 will legalize marijuana. It will, I support that. Yeah, it will follow a regulatory system like alcohol, so you have to be 21. You can't drive down the road high. And it will allow you to grow up to 12 plants for personal use without a... Uh, commercial license and at any time you can have 10 ounce limit per residency of actual pot you've picked and stuff yeah <coughs> I kind of like it and it'll take a lot of uh, felony crimes or criminal charges and it will convert them to a uh, civil so it really turns into just pay the 90 bucks court fee and you won't be held off to prison for a lot of those charges. That sounds really good, because I think we need less people in prison for stupid crimes. Well, Michigan has a prison population. Our population, there's 30% more people in prison in the surrounding states. So... That just sounds perfect. Ah. Uh, well, yeah. Only anything... most of those were lefties. Well, probably, but anything we can do to uh, alleviate stupid crimes, the better. Like, personally, if you want to smoke marijuana on your couch and get high, I don't give a shit. Just don't do it around me. Agreed. That's one of the one of the problems. Is like people people care about other people's safety too much. Absolutely. If, so, if someone wants to go, you know driving drunk on their own property, why would I care? It's their property if they crash into a tree. Ha <laughs> ha! It was well, their stupid stupidity. Person. Yeah, they don't that. that's no one else's. They shouldn't be stopped from doing that. There's no reason to stop them. I fully agree. And I wish more You're people would adopt that attitude and mindset. Um... Did you see this giant temple over here? It's a giant temple? Yeah, it's a... Yeah. A brick temple. Oh, well, well I'm, we're setting up in that. I am the new rabbi. Uh, oof, I gotta go grab my charger. I forgot about that. It has my a guy. lot of windows, though, we have to barricade. We can just cover that with a log wall. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Hang on, I gotta go grab my charger cord. Oof. That's why computer decides it should just shoot itself. I can't believe you would forget the importance. The important things in life, Tyler. I know, right? I can't believe I'm such a horrible person. So while he's doing that, I'll read to you the text that's going to be on the ballot. A proposed initiative law to authorize and legalize possession, use, and cultivation of marijuana products by individuals who are at least 21 years of age and older, and commercial sales of marijuana to state licensed retailers. The proposal would allow individuals 21 or older to purchase, possess, and use marijuana and marijuana-infused edibles and grow up to 12 plants for personal consumption, impose a 10-ounce limit for marijuana kept at residencies, and require amounts over 2.5 ounces to be secured and locked in containers. I kind of agree with that, so you don't get uh, kids just... Yeah, I don't, I don't like the idea of kids just having rampant access to this stuff. 
So making it so you have to lock it up over a certain amount. But then again, if you have the marijuana plants, you can't really lock them up. So. All right, I'm almost back. Sorry. Yeah, all right. Um, this will allow though local municipalities to ban marijuana still. So even if it passes on a statewide level, let's say, take for example, uh, Ionia County, or even smaller, because it just says local municipalities, so let's say Lake Odessa, they could still ban it, and you could still, uh, get a, you could still be in violation of local ordinances, even though it's a state law. And I, I support local governments better more than a have your government. Agreed, because it's a lot easier to get a local government to change a policy, and I believe on the ground of community, we build communities because we have certain beliefs and values with each other. So if Lake Odessa mm -hmm. believes that it's better that we don't have pot there, that's fine. That's You're not going to invite me again. Alright, that's my personal take on it. I would agree. I, I think um, kind of local governments have the last few years, last few years, last of all the time. Mm -hmm. As I think it like the school system. I, I was trying to ex I was trying to explain this to my parents. Uh, you know the school systems, you know, federal and stuff, mm -hmm. state owned and stuff. But any any. Uh, community could just get together and build their own school well, before the department of education even our public schools they were ran by the community like we used to have 700 school districts in michigan because it was like lake odessa a small town like that had its own school system and then clarksville had its own school system and everyone was involved and decided what the kids actually learned yeah like that that's what I think should be, yeah. On the top because, you know. Well, on the topic of school, I support choice. So, I don't believe one school system is necessarily better over another, so like private, religious, uh, public, or charter. I want to build an environment where they can compete with each other, and you as the parent can decide what you think is best for your kid. Yeah. Though I do lean more towards not having public schools in the sense that they're state or federal operated. I'm not sure I can agree with you on that. That's fine. What do you have against it? Um, well, see, uh, if the schools are competing, they're... They're not thinking more about the kids, they're thinking more about the prophets. And not prophets like Jesus. Yeah, I, I understand that, and that is a legitimate drawback. But I don't want to create an, a one-size-fits-all school system. Because I think that Whoa. leaves too many kids out of the way, too. And that's what you get when you have state or federal-run systems. Well, I think they should be locally run. Oh, this car has is full of gas. Would you have any state oversight? Oversight over the, the schools or... Well, they would have to be regulated to have certain things. Yeah, like, in Michigan right now, every school, homeschool, religious, and etc. is required to teach uh, English now, uh, basic mathematics, basic science, and a government course. Yeah, and we should have things like that. I support that as well, because, um, one, it creates a base that everyone knows X thing. So we all have yeah. a basic understanding how our government works. Granted, I don't really think that works in practice right now, because we built a culture of not caring, but... Oh, well, yeah, no one really cares. Everyone thinks their vote doesn't matter. I think it's like that on the federal level with the Electoral College, because states like yeah. Colorado can be like, yeah, I know that the popular vote said this, but 
I really feel like voting this way instead. Yeah. I then states like um, California, they like what Michigan does is we have to vote by percentage. So if uh, fifty percent voted Republican, then fifty percent of our electoral votes go to the Republicans and vice versa. And it's up to each state to decide how they do that. In California, if the let's say Democrats, which they always do, if they get the popular vote, they automatically gain every electoral college vote. And that's uh, yeah, that's just retarded. Yeah, and that's fifty-five votes. And how many states do you need to convert just to break even with California alone? Yeah, because California is huge. Yeah. And let's say it's like a fifty-one percent, you know, forty-nine percent split. Well, forty-nine percent of the population of California not Just, getting heard in the public yeah, in the actual polls. They're not getting represented at all, which is yeah. what, the whole thing about the new California initiative. Which yeah, I saw that. Do you have any thoughts for or against it? Well, I I think they should. I think I think uh, California is too far apart politically. I think the new California proposal is the one that's going to succeed out of all of them. Because there is a proposal to just walk away from the United States. I personally don't think we would let a state walk away. Oh, I doubt it too. Yeah. That'd if, be... Well, if it passed, we'll call a state of emergency and we'll send the army in there. We'll wipe out the state yeah. government institute a new one. Yeah. On the other hand, there's ballot initiatives that want to split the state up into like three to six uh, different states. Yeah. See, those those proposals make sense. Yeah, but the countries, the that state's just too far apart. I agree, but no one wants to put the practical thought into it. We now have six states here. What do we do? So I think the new California proposal is the most thought out one and the most likely to succeed. Just splitting the state in half and allowing each county on the border to choose which one they end up in. Yeah. I think most will end up in the new California though. Oh, absolutely. Because all of the... Like, if you're in Los Angeles, you ask someone on the street if they're a Democrat or Republican, they're a Democrat. You, you go ten feet outside of uh, that filthy like, place yeah i'm a republican or i uh yeah based on issues yeah most of the people outside of the big cities are not filthy um the other thing about the new california method is they're actually appealing to congress like part of the initiative is it would submit a bill to congress to have them approve it <clears throat> and i doubt well Congress actually might might pass that. Well, since it's a Republican-led legislature, if it stays that, this would give us at least half of the votes from California. Yeah. So I think it does have a good chance. And that is a large amount of votes. <laughs> Absolutely, and it would help the Republican cause in general. Oh, yeah. I mean, given, I'm pretty sure they're winning anyway. Yeah, but I mean, you take California away, that's that's where they get a good chunk of votes every year for our federal yeah. Congress, so and for president and stuff. Yeah. So on to the second proposal here in Michigan. So this is a amendment to the Constitution to end gerrymandering. Do you know what gerrymandering is, Kyler? I, I do. All right. So how this proposal aims to uh, fix it is there will be 13 people in total, four who identify with the two major political party, and five who identify as unaffiliated. So for me, since I'm uh, a registered party member, even though it's not with the two major parties, but let's assume I am, then I could be drawn for one of the four, but not the other. It also limits government employees and direct relatives to them. So, like, if you were the governor and I was your niece, 
I couldn't. There's too close of a relation. And then every All 10 right. years after the census, you would form a committee with these people who were randomly selected, kind of like how you're selected for jury duty. And you would draw. No, they're random? Yeah. So you have a poll of the two major political parties. They're going to select four from each. And then you have a poll of people who are registered to vote but not registered with the parties. And they're going to randomly select five. All right. That's the problem with the current system is that they're not accountable. Well, the current system is um, the major political party decides it. I think it's either through the House yeah. or the Senate. I think the House does. Yeah, I just don't like that. So putting more power into the people's hands, I can yeah. agree with that. My That's only, correct. Well, my only concern is with the way your culture is, are we going to randomly get old, incompetent people who can't look at a map? <sighs> that is an issue. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there are going to be some rules around the districts, though, like population size per representative. So it's not just like, oh, this half of Michigan is a district. Yeah. So I can get behind that as well. Um, the last proposal I'm actually against. What is it? Because it would bring straight party ticket back. It'll do a few other things. That's where you that's where you can only vote your party, right? Um, it's where you have an option at the top to vote Republican, Democrat, or Libertarian because we are a primary party this year. And then you cast a vote for every single spot for that party down the ticket. So if you Yeah, that's not okay. Ooh, this is the first year we got rid of it in Michigan, and it's a huge step forward. Because you get people who, like Republicans who came in, I gotta vote for Trump because it's the end of the world. They checked that box and now they just voted in elections they didn't even care to know existed. Yeah, like some random guy just got made treasurer or something. Yeah, and I disagree. You don't even know who he is. I disagree with that full heartedly. And what I don't understand is when you talk to this about people, they're like, no, it's a good thing. Why do I want to manually check Republican for every box? I'm like, why do you just want to check Republican? If you're a Trump fan, there are Republicans who are anti-Trump. So why yeah. would you want to elect an anti-Trump Republican? They don't seem to understand that, though. Yeah, I, I know. So like, why would a Republican be anti-Trump? Though, I'm split on this because I'm against the straight uh, ticket voting. But it would make it easier for absentee voting and uh, military. Voting for people who are overseas in our military. So, when you get drafted into the military, or you join for your four-year tenant, you're still a citizen of the state you were last in. And you can still yeah. vote in your state elections. And this would make it easier for our military members to vote in our state elections. And I'm for that as well. But sadly, I'm going to vote against it, because I do not want straight party ticket back. Yeah, straight party ticket's not good. Oh. Um. By the way, Dakota, I've just been driving this car around that town. I ran out of the town. Every time I went to try to get food, I got attacked by six zombies, so... I'm just crashing a car into zombies. And into trees. So, one thing though, Right now, when you go to get an absentee uh, ballot, you have to give a reason why you're getting it. So, for example, if I'm going to be in the hospital all day on November 6th because uh, surgery and then I have to rest, I can't vote on November 6th. So beforehand, I need to get an absentee ballot, and I would have to give that as the reason why I cannot vote on November 6th. Now is, you don't need a reason. You just ask, and they give one to you, if the third proposal passes. Well, shouldn't that be the way it is? I like that as an idea, because you still have you still have to be registered to vote, so you don't have the fear of uh, people voting like ten times. Yeah. Also, this would automatically register people to vote, too. 
So when you go to get your driver's license or renewed or state ID if you don't have a driver's license, it would automatically register you to vote unless you specifically opt out. Where this will be a problem is for people like my dad. He does not vote because when you get registered to vote, you're put on the list to be selected for a jury, even though I think it's one of the highest honors you can have as an American, as a civilian. He absolutely is opposed to it. So this would put him in the pool for jury voting, and I guarantee you he's not going to remember to opt out when he renews his license. Hmm. Not sure how I feel about it, because I do think jury duty is important. Well, jury duty is really only important now in criminal cases, because our state constitution fucked with the civil jury completely. So in criminal cases, you still get your 12-man jury, and one person can hang a jury. Granted, we don't have a lot of hung juries now, because people just want to uh, say guilty and get the fuck out of the court. And I wish we wouldn't have bred a culture like that. But in, yeah, that's... Well, in civil juries, it can be a max of six people. Uh, with an exception, the judge can be a seventh person, and you only need to convince four people on that jury to convict you. So, imagine this. The judge is against you, so he now becomes um, the seventh person. Your odds are now more against you. Which, why would we even let a judge be a member on a jury in the first place is beyond me. He's there to be a referee read and force yeah. the rules. Yeah, that's a stupid decision. But it's right in our state constitution, and it irritates the fuck out of me. I wish we were like Georgia or Oregon, where we're like, when we talk about juries in our state constitution, we're like, they have the power to try both law and fact, period. You know that why, should be... Well, do you know why that's important? So, uh, from reading an essay in Trial by Jury by Lysander Spooner, the common law jury yeah. that we inherited had the power to uh, basically hang a jury and create court precedent. So if I keep arresting you and dragging you for the court before X thing, but every jury dismisses the charges, then we create a case history that, no... This isn't a law we enforce in Barry County. Yeah. But you can only do that when you can try both fact and law. If you can only try fact, then it's only a question of, well, does the evidence support you broke the law? Yes or no. It takes away the question of morality of the law or the justice of the law from the jury. Hmm. See, this is... I, I agree with you on that. Like, if the, if if people don't agree that the law should be a law, then the law should be removed. Well, the thing is, juries also gave us all our great exceptions. Like, in the old world, Parliament passed a law, you can't murder. Well, what does that mean? Well, that didn't include self-defense. That didn't include someone, well, this is still self-defense, but if, if I broke into your house in the middle of the night, you could shoot me dead, and no court would say that that was first-degree murder. And that came about by jury decision shaping the idea of what we mean as a culture of murder. So, but when you take away their ability to try the law itself, you no longer get that. Because it becomes, well, did you, did you kill the guy? Well, absolutely, I killed the guy who broke into my house in the middle of the night and assaulted me. Well, you're guilty. Well, it's the prison. Yeah. Well, there's another disturbing thing about the Michigan Constitution I don't like. So, do you know what a felony charge is? Yes. It's anything you can go to jail for more than a year. Yeah. So, and the legislature can make almost anything they want a felony charge. Well, in our state constitution, if you get charged with a felony, it doesn't matter what it's for, you cannot serve in any elected public office for 20 years after you served your time. So they could just claim something stupid. Yeah, and they could eliminate all their competition. Yeah. The approach I would rather take is once you served your time, you can run, but you have 
you can't hide the fact that you went to prison. Yeah. I agree. You can't hide that you're like, oh, well, I mean, I... Yeah, I've After been... you're already elected, it's like, yeah, I went to prison, by the way. Oh, yeah, I've been to prison five times, guys. To me, once you serve your time... I think that most of the restrictions should be lifted. You just have to be upfront about it. Obviously, that won't yeah. just go, uh, solve like jobs discriminating against you. But yeah. Speaking of which, did you know, as a social media company, that you can discriminate against anyone for any reason on your platform? And the left think that's a good idea, but if we take that to reality, it's now a bad idea. Yeah, I noticed that. Like, uh... I don't like the duality... Like not... Like not allowing African American people into a restaurant because you hate black people is bad. Yeah. Obviously. But, um, banning conservatives or banning gays or banning something on social media because they're that... Because they're that group. Mm. Isn't. Which is just... Please kill me. Yeah, I just don't like the the duality of things we need yeah. to have one standard it's either yes as a private company i can discriminate against people so let's say you're a gay who owns a restaurant and you're like i don't serve filthy christians all right that's your right but i don't like how we have two separate standards because one's in person and one's online well, I think if you have someone, I don't think you should be able to discriminate against someone. Need like, well, because like if someone comes into your store and it's like, well, I'm gay, well, get out. Like, well, neither do I. But if we're gonna have the one standard here and the other standard there, it either we can't discriminate against you because you're gay or Christian or lesbian, whatever, or we can. <laughs> Did that make up your goddamn mind? Yeah, because both of them are private companies, so. The yeah. only difference is one federal law says that you can do it. And that should probably be removed. It's section 230, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm not quoting you on that because I won't remember, I won't remember it. Alright. Um, <laughs> but the sad thing is the law is being applied as it was intended to be implied. Well, kind of. So, when Congress passed that law, they thought we were going to be a good Christian people and promote uh, family-friendly content on the internet. Yeah. So they gave private companies, and this was back in the early 90s or so when it was passed. So the definition is any uh, networked distributed computer system has the right to ban people for any reason. Yeah. Yeah. That includes well, a lot that, more than social media, but... Well that, well, that became... That was before, basically, social media became the public square. It was. Um, I actually... I know this is hard coming from a libertarian, because, you know, we want deregulation of things, but I think yeah. we need an Internet Bill of Rights. But the yeah. Only, the only way that would work is as an international treaty. Yeah, because a uh, a company couldn't work with two different. They don't work with two different servers very well. Well, um, Microsoft. As much as I hated them in the past, I'm actually coming around to liking them. They had a server that was somewhere in Europe, and the U.S. court wanted access to it. Microsoft's like, well, we have a treaty process for you to contact that government, have that government issue a warrant, and collect the data. Otherwise, that server's not on U.S. soil, so we're not just handing you over that data. And they ended up fighting it all the way to the highest court. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, it's just not something I would necessarily think that Microsoft would have done without reading it. Yeah. They're, they're kind of Microsoft. Yeah. Ooh. They're kind of cooks. Yeah. Well, on the flip side, you have Apple that's like, yeah, because we don't want anyone to know how we do shit, we'll go to the highest court to protect our right not to de-encrypt a phone because those jailbreakers might learn how to do it better. Yeah. 
I don't like the motive, but I like the outcome, so... <coughs> yeah, I think... I think big companies like that do... Like, um... They do need to be somewhat regulated. Like, that's the point. That's one of the points of government is to protect the people. Yeah, which is why I'm a minarchist, not an anarchist. I believe we need a little bit of government, and I believe that why I prefer as far as free market as possible, a true free market is a utopian idea. It's just never going to happen. Uh, yeah, obviously. Well, the thing is, when you talk to libertarians, and when I went to the convention, they're all sold on we're going to build the utopia like the Marxists are. I'm like, no, we're going to build something as close as possible to the utopia, but we're never going to get to the utopia. It's just not going to happen as long as we have free will. And, um, that's what I was, I was uh, thinking about. Like, if you had a true free market, eventually one company would make it to the top of that, and they would start, you know, cutting out their competition. Well, they would become the state. Yeah. They, they'd start cutting out their competition, and then they'd be a and then you no longer have a free market. Absolutely. Not really. Well, libertarians would argue, well, people would boycott, people would put up arms against a tyrannical overreach like that. I'm like... But well, people don't actually do that. Yeah, I'm like, look around. Every time we've done that, there's been a major world-changing event that motivated it. How many people do you see picking up arms against the, t the current situation? No one. I mean, imagine if Apple did it. Do you think all those people who only care about the iPhone are... They're going to be happy there's no other competition. They only care about the iPhone. It's like, uh... McDonald's. Every, everyone knows McDonald's sucks. Everyone knows that's, that's bad for you. Everyone knows they get their orders wrong. Everyone still buys McDonald's. Abs yeah. And then they're pissed that they're going to, uh... Self-service for getting your orders and stuff. Wait. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when you want to make the minimum wage a wage that you could live on comfortably. Yeah, I don't use those little self-service stations. Yeah. I haven't been to McDonald's in months, so... I just wait until... I just sit there and wait and look at them. <laughs> yeah. Eventually one's like, yeah, how can I help you? And I just sit there staring at him for a second and then go... Yeah, I'll have a number nine. Like, why couldn't you just use the self-serving station? Because I'm not a, I'm not a prick. Because mm -hmm. if you think about it, if you, if everyone start use, starts using those self-service stations, then there's no reason for the counter. They would and be... like, and like ten people just lost their jobs. Absolutely, and I think that's, I don't. I think that over time, as the market evolves, there will be jobs we lose. But this is yeah. being pushed by economic factors of every time we turn around, every state wants to raise their minimum wage higher and higher and higher. Yeah. And then we have to complete with inflation, making our money more <laughs> worthless and worthless every day. Well, what do we do to still make a profit? Gotta get rid of people. Yeah, they're going with the cheapest solution possible. Like, I guess I can't fault them for that. That's one of the problems with being in a, a big industry, is that you stop thinking about the for the person. Well, one thing it's also culture at the company of the individuals. Like, you worked at Bradford Way. I don't know if you want me yeah. to say that or not, but... I did, yeah. Um, for a little while. Second shift and third shift have two complete different cultures. As long as I'm not driving the high and my work's done, no one cares if I listen to music with my headphones and I play on my phone as long as I'm not walking throughout the plant. I stayed yeah. over late one night and I was walking out and a third shift uh, union steward stopped me. He's like, if they see you with that stuff, they will walk you out immediately. I'm like, I've been doing it for nine months now. Everyone yeah. knows. So... I think part of it is the culture that you breed in the companies. I think, yeah. I think Bradford White in that case is fucked with every shift having a completely different culture, how to run stuff. Yeah, eventually they're just not going to be together on anything. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. 
Well, that's my other big problem with people who push libertarianism, is that we want to pretend morals don't matter. Like, you need to... You can't just sell this idea we're going to deregulate everything and it's going to be kumbaya. You need to teach people to be moral. You need to teach yeah. people not to steal. Because if you don't, they'll be like, I can steal and make a profit. Yeah, that's what I... Yeah, that's one of the reasons I think that, uh, like when you're, when you're in the, as head of a company and you're looking at your profits, you go, well, what could we do to make the company better? Well, we could fire these people. Mm -hmm. Well, all right, we need to make more money. Fire those people. You're, you're not the guy explaining to those guys that we're firing you so we can make a few extra bucks. Yeah, and you're also not caring that all those people you fired now have to go home to their families and be like, well, I don't yeah. know if we're going to pay the rent this month. Yeah. And it's not like... I mean, if a lot of them, if you, like, brought them down and were like, well, here we go, explain to this guy why he's getting fired. A lot of them would be like, oh, well, oh, this is horrible, let's keep him. Yeah, I'm not opposed to firing people who won't do their job. Oh, I yeah. I think that we should always look for more ways to increase the job market. Bradford White, yeah. though, is doing that in a negative. Like, do you know the yeah. line inspectors? How it used to only be one person doing it? There's now yeah. three people per station doing it. And we still can't uh, produce any more tanks. Well, yeah, because they're already running at maximum. Yeah, but why is just adding two other people to stand and watch going to, uh... going to give an outcome? Our big Ooh. problem with the tanks is we have a lot of scrap tanks because no one gives a shit about their job. Yeah. I, I remember that, don't worry about it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I see that on a constant day. Uh, I was, uh, I don't remember if you, uh, have you been over to tank testing? Yes. So they, they, they test the tank for holes? You? Yeah, there's there's one guy on there that just doesn't even test them. He and just puts them up in the sand, gets them wet, turns them around, throws them out. I uh, met three people there who's bought water heaters, and every single one of them was broken because of people like him who just don't care. Yeah. Well, it's like, well, if they don't care, they should be fired. Absolutely. Like, we're trying to run a company, and if you're not going to do your job, then you're not worth keeping around yeah but Bradford waits in another situation with working every other Sunday and starting out at $14 an hour compared to other factories it's like do I want to give up my entire life to this place yeah like when we started doing that we lost <laughs> all our welders within two weeks all the welders yeah I saw I remember I was, I was there when that happened. When yeah. we started talking about it and stuff. It's one um, of the reasons I was on, um... Tank testing so much, is because they had a welder that was gone, and they had a tank tester doing the welding. Mm-hmm. This is why my long-term goal, if I stay there, is to get into HR. Yeah. Because you'll only work Monday through Friday. I'll make more money than I'm work making now, working all this overtime. Yeah. That's that's my long term goal. The problem oh, that's is that's a good long term goal. Well the problem is though, most HR offices are filled with your lefties who went to college and think they know how to run everything but don't yeah. know how to experience anything. Yeah. But it'll but, be uh, <clears throat> I'm really glad that I drive better than That you drive better than me? Everyone that does. I drive better than me. I have to crash into seven trees. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm like, everyone drives better than me. It's no secret I'm not the greatest. Yeah. Please low, let me know that Dakota sucks. <laughs> hey, I, at least I have my license. I have my license. I know. Well, oh, I thought you were digging at me. No, I'm alluding to the other person we know. Which one? Uh, oh, Will. oh, oh, that, the blue guy, alright. He just came to a revelation, you can only get your learner's permit three times, 
and if you fail it three times, then you can't ever get a driver's license in Michigan. What? I didn't know that. When you get your learning permit, it costs 25 bucks and you have to take a written test. You can renew it a maximum of three times. So if you fail your driving test over and over, or you let the permit expire all three times, you cannot get a new permit in Michigan. So you would have to go, let's say, to Ohio, get a driving permit there, then get a license, then come back to Michigan. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah. Well, so he can't get a license in Michigan? No, he's only failed the permit once because he let it expire. Because he doesn't like driving with his parents who are teaching him how to drive. Yeah. And at the Secretary of State's the other day, they're like, well, you already had one permit once. You know you're running out of permits at this rate. And he was surprised. Oh, absolutely. I'm like, I tried telling you that months ago, Will. That's why I kept hounding you. You need to just get your license. You don't, you don't even got to be good at driving. You just got to get your license like, dude. No, I mean, those courses are designed so the most stupid person can get their license. All yeah, they care yeah. about is that you went through the state to get it, and that you pay the um, you pay in all steps of the way. That's all they care about. Yeah. Give us the money and you can drive. Yeah, essentially. Um, speaking of which, if you get your commercial driver's license, you can actually teach drivers, eh? Yeah. And actually... Or you can be just the people who do the road test. So we're going to take an hour of my life in your car, your gas, your insurance, and I'm going to get 50 bucks for it? Yeah, but you still got to waste an hour of your time. Well, I mean, comparatively, though, I make eighteen eighty-four an hour, and he made $50 an hour. Yeah, but he's not having one every single hour. I know, but as a side thing, though... Oh, yeah. So, so, like, I can schedule, I can create a driving course, and I can put up a website and schedule it so it works with my time, and now I'm bringing in exponentially more money from a side thing. Yeah. Don't you also gotta go through a little course to... Yeah, you, you have sure. to get your commercial driver's license to do it, because there's a way higher standard on commercial driver's license than, uh... Yeah. I don't want to say residential, driver. because... That doesn't sound right, but for all intents and purposes, it's a residential license. Hmm. Uh, any other stupid things you see in the world you want to comment on? Well, I mean, you know, Gab getting censored. Oh, it, I hate how that was taken down. You know that they didn't even have uh, Google or iOS apps because they were denied from both stores? Yeah, I know. It and on Facebook, on Facebook, you couldn't link to Gab. Yeah, it turns out they tried um, they tried suing Google over uh, discrimination for their Play app, but they ended up dropping yeah. the lawsuit. Well, yeah, because Google Play can put anything on their app store. Absolutely. I just hate how so one user made a stupid post, and now. No bank will yeah. process their payment. GoDaddy won't host their, won't, won't give them the domain that it's registered with. Their web server host was like, yeah, your servers are going offline now. And yeah. even when they try making public statements, yeah, we don't support this. We cooperated fully with police. Because of our cooperation, the police have good evidence to pursue the guy in court now. Yeah. And you know. If you look at it, that guy has, um, that guy has Facebook and stuff accounts and everything, but you don't see anyone going after them. Yeah, the same. Well, before we never assumed that, oh yeah, this rapist had a YouTube account, therefore YouTube participated in the rape. It's like the YouTube shooter had a, uh, a YouTube account. Yeah, so YouTube helped shoot themselves. Yeah. That's... You don't see them getting banned or anything. It's just really stupid. I think it's just a power grab. Yeah, obviously. Well, a Gab lot of... is... 
Gab is the place for all of the the people who've been banned from Twitter are going. Well, Gab was successful. Like, I'm a proponent of BitChute, which will pull this video in automatically. But it yeah. doesn't have a mobile app. And without a mobile app, it won't succeed on a large scale. Gab yeah. had all of those things. While you couldn't install it from the Play Store, you still could download the APK, get the mobile app up and running. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, but, um... It's obviously for political reasons, and they want to get... Okay, so, the whole premise of censoring something, you know, yeah. is you're saying to everyone on your side is that that... I think, I think I'm quoting someone here, I don't remember. But, uh, you're, you're, you're guaranteeing the fact that to everyone on your side, that that argument that you just censored, that no one can now talk about, will never become relevant. Yeah. And when it does... Ooh, you just lost a big, big amount of things, you know? You. So what they're trying to do is, all the people they're banned are going to this, to a new place to explain everything, you know? Yeah. And... Yeah, exactly. On uh, Ben Shapiro's last show, they talked about uh, polls and stuff. Yeah. It turns out, if you want to be a successful candidate, right or left, you need to talk about how we're going to continue growing the economy. Because that's what 67% of the polls care about. I ain't border control and protection. Yeah. So, I mean, well, according to the left, 67% of the polls say we need to enforce our border laws and we need to focus on keep building our economy. Like... For once, your wage increases this year were real wage increases because we were, our dollar went up more than inflation did in value. And it turns yeah, out, I saw that. yeah, it turns out people care about that and not just, oh yeah, uh, we should just let randos walk in here. Yeah, because you know, when randos walk in here, most of them are kind of MS thirteen. Well, yeah, and. But don't say that, because then you're just a racist bigot. Uh, don't you just like the that um, press conference where President Trump was like, uh, a god emperor, was the, like, uh, these people, he was talking about MS-13, mm -hmm. and then the next sentence he said that these people are animals and not people. Yeah, I remember that. And then the people are like, oh, he's calling Mexicans people. And it's like, wow, that's so out of context, I'm not even sure you read the article. He, he's clearly talking about MS-13, who is hey, a poor was, animal. They are the closest thing to animals humans can be. Yeah. But... <laughs> you should edit that out. Okay. Or leave it in. I'm, we're, I'm putting this up on Pornhub afterwards. Yeah. Oh. Look for Bear Studio on Pornhub. We will be there. Kaiser and Basilius, episode one. Yo, introduction. The Basilius runs around while... <laughs> while the Emperor runs into zombies for an hour. Watch, um, we get banned from Pornhub because it's not porn. <laughs> Actually, you can't. The Pornhub doesn't really moderate their things. Oh, that's good. I mean, like. We'll probably get a lot of dislikes, though. Oh, probably. <laughs> Dislike. This isn't. This doesn't belong here. <laughs> yeah. If you think about it, that site is literally kind of a social media platform. <laughs> yup. You can actually look at it. Like, you can make an account and send messages to people and stuff. Well, like, it's like YouTube. Well, it's like YouTube. Like adult thing, YouTube. Okay, absolutely. Everything over uh, you can put me on that. is Pornhub actually has a mobile app for Android phones. Yeah. So, well, most people do this stuff on their phones nowadays. So, we're now reaching the YouTube audience, the BitChute audience, and the Pornhub audience. Good, good. We're gonna we're gonna expand quickly. We're gonna get all them subscribers, all them YouTube buddies. Yeah. Here's what I'll do. On the one that upload to Pornhub, I'll put a little picture, different picture each time in the corner. 
why. Oh, so they're different? No, just to say, yeah, see, this is boring. Don't you see the girl in the corner? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. The title for um, the, the Pornhub one could be, This is clearly porn. <laughs> yeah. Or you could just type in word porn. Yeah. Or nature. Well, we didn't really talk about nature. Uh, yeah. Speaking of nature, how do you feel about climate change? Okay, so I believe the culture naturally changes over, not culture, the climate naturally increases and decreases over time. I do believe we play a role in it, but as our technology is getting better and better, we've actually, we've actually been having more of a positive impact than they would lead you to believe. Well, I, I can see both sides of the issue. Ooh. As a... I don't know, you know what a negative feedback, feedback loop is? Not off the top of my head. That's where when you, oh, here's, sorry, positive feedback loop. When Ooh. you do a thing, it creates more things that causes the thing to happen again. Yeah. So let's say we burn tons of, um, tons of CO2 into the air, okay? Mm. And that causes the planet to heat. Even if it's just slightly. Well, if you look at all the, you know, the, the frozen tundra, the permafrost? Yeah. In, like, Canada and stuff? Frozen in that permafrost is, like, a bunch of, um, you know, dead animals and stuff. And when the planet warms a little bit, those get let off into the atmosphere, and it's mostly methane. Yeah. Which is a, a humongously worse gas in the air than CO2 is. And we don't really have a way, there's no real way to remove methane. See, so basically, is... the methane, the CO two causing the heat causes more methane to be released, which causes more heat, which causes more methane to be. The ice caps melt because there's more heat, and if you look at the, you know what the ice caps do, right? They uh, they, re they reflect a lot of the heat back into the yeah. atmosphere. No. It's the same Space. reason people have arguments against terraforming the Sahara Desert because it reflects the most yeah. amount of radiation into the. Yeah. Like, because if we get rid of if the ice caps melt more, you lose more area that's reflecting light, causing more heat to be retained, which obviously causes more methane to be the permafrost to melt. Mm -hmm. And that causes the, the planet to heat more, which causes more icebergs to be destroyed. And remember, this whole time we're also still releasing CO2. Yeah. Um, my opinion on it. I would like to see us move to more, more renewable and green technology, but I don't think it's accelerating at the rate that the left wants you to believe it's accelerating at. Well, yeah, you remember that uh, article a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, where it was like uh, the planet is it hasn't actually raised that much since 2008. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. But, um, how do you feel about draining the Great Lakes? Um, what would we do with the water? Outsource it to Africa. So, what would happen is we'd create a desert where the Great Lakes are, and we'll terraform the other desert. I'd rather keep our water here. I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm a state nationalist. Absolutely. I think he, I think keeping our water in Michigan is important because we're the Africans. Well, I mean, um, the main problem with African countries, it's not that they don't have resources. It's just that unlike the European nations where we built up a thing of rule of law, that means nothing to them. So you have yeah. corruption rampage. And if they could solve that, they have the resources, and with a little bit of help from the first world, we could transform all of Africa. But we can't force yeah, them they don't, to adopt a new mindset. They don't have the same values we do. Yeah. Well, it's just that's just like Mexico. Like they don't they don't have the same values as we do. Like trying to get rid of people. Like 
the corrupt officials. They don't try to do that. Well, have you ever heard of the Lost Provinces? Yes, I believe. I was watching it. That's, a... that's southern Mexico, right? The Lost Provinces are California, Texas, and the states in that area. Oh, it's... oh. They were used to own by Mexico, and then when Texas yeah. succeeded, and then we had our Alamo and stuff, we took all of that. Yeah. Well, it turns out we could have kept all of Mexico, but we gave them that half back. And in the documentary, uh, Dinesh is making the argument that you never hear someone from the Lost Province trying to illegally jump the border to Mexico. It's always the <laughs> other way around. Because that is true. all these Mexicans are claiming, well, you stole all this land from us. You need to give it back. It belongs to us. And he's like, well, why that may be true, but I guarantee you, if we would have kept all of Mexico, no one would have said a thing like that. I guarantee Well, if, if we kept all of Mexico, we could have, uh, there wouldn't be such heavy drug cartels and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Personally, I believe the reason we didn't, and it's the reason we won't let Canada join us, is like the small, medium, large thing for marketing. Yeah. It looks good when you have a bad country next to us and a decent country on the other side. Well, you, uh, one of the main problems I believe with Mexico is that you know a lot of the citizens there are, are serfs, right? Yeah. We don't, we don't really have that in these states. Ever since the end of sharecropping and stuff, mm. we've never really had that. Mexico has a lot of the world has served. Yeah. Where and the, a serf can just be kicked off the land for no reason, and have all their property there seized because it wasn't their property. It was the person who owns the land's property. Well, New Mexico is trying to do that. Not New Mexico, South Africa. Sorry. Well, South Africa needs to be blown up. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're literally racist. They're going back to the apartheid. Yeah, they were trying to mend their constitution. So would be like, yeah, all these white people who grew up in this democratic society who bought their land. Yeah, we can now yeah. take it from you. Yeah, I, I know. It's... <sighs> I hate people. I hate... Yeah. Well, again, that's a different of values. Do you yeah. believe in positive rights or negative rights? What do you mean? A positive... Well, your right to keep and bear arms, your right to self-defense is a negative right. There is no duty for the government to provide me a gun. They just have a duty not to infringe. A positive right is like universal health care, where we put a duty on society to do something. Oh, I'm I'm negative rights then. Yeah, well, our theory of uh, our constitution was based on a negative rights theory. <laughs> In South Africa, it's based off a positive rights theory. Yeah, they're kind of socialists. Well, yeah, and, well, that's the main cultural difference. Do you value negative or positive? In regard to rights. Yeah, definitely negative right? I don't think the. Obviously. God dang. What was I trying to say? We only have one positive right that you can kind of argue in our constitution, and that's your right to have counsel. Uh, again, I mean, yes and no. Well, that's why I said you could argue it. Yeah. That's the only one you could make a, a decent argument in favor of. Yeah, that's, you know, uh, go up to someone, okay, and, uh, tell them that America's not a democracy. Oh. Um, because we're not. We're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. Yeah, it is a democratic but, form of government, yeah. but... People are so surprised. They're like, yes, we're a democracy, but a democracy is like, uh, let's say you got, like, a pack of wolves. And you got sheep. And you decide, yeah. I want you to eat for dinner that night. And the three wolves yeah. are like, well, that one sheep looks real good. And the sheep's like, let's not eat me. And guess what? The sheep's still getting eaten. Absolutely. But in a republic, the sheep's got a gun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. 
But no, the sheep the sheep has rights. You'll Absolutely. have the farmer step in between the the two. Yeah. And stop the sheep getting eaten. Uh, but yeah, I've yeah. noticed that. I always equate the simplest democracies are mob rules because they're, yeah, they are. They're the direct yeah, yeah. rule of whoever the majority is. Yeah, that's the intrinsic. It's intrinsic to a democracy. That um, it's, it's mob ruled. Because the, the majority of people aren't just going to be like, oh, well, we should give all of these people the rights, even if they disagree with us. Yeah, well, that's one of the great things about the English common law system we inherited. It was created by individual court cases on the premise that you always favor, not always, but you, you tend to lean towards more towards the minority to say, yeah, they still have a right to liberty, and you need to prove why they don't have a right to liberty, not the other like, way. Uh, here's how I kind of explained it. Uh, let's say that, uh, let's say you're like a pure democracy guy, okay? Hmm. You believe in democracy over everything else. Which I have met a few people who do this. I don't know really how prevalent they are, but... I've never met a pure democracy person, but I trust you they exist. Um, basically, what I propose to them is, let's say that a majority of people in the U.S., let's say all of the white people, mm -hmm. wanted all of the black people dead. For no reason. They just want them dead. Well, if you believe in democracy purely, you know, you have no argument against that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the one thing that I, um like about here i seen an article the other day he's like yeah i turned out of the news for 30 days and i had the best time in my entire life yeah the, the news is depressing well he's like every time you turn on the news you hear about all this negative stuff and how america's going to hell and we're so immoral and uh the gay can't do this but when you turn off the news and just talk to normal people all that goes yeah. away. That's because the media represents like 20% of the population. Well, did you see... I think uh, Hamcast did a video on this. Or about how like the Daily Wire keeps growing and growing, but all your traditional media are dying. CNN yeah. is dying. Um, even Fox News is dying. Well, they've, ga they've gained more... Um... They have gained oh, more. Than uh, CNN's law. Fox whatever. News has gained more, and I think people like Tucker Carlson helps with that. I mean, Tucker Carlson's it, awesome. Absolutely. It's hilarious. I, you remember when they, um, I don't know if you watched this one, but remember when they uh, interviewed uh, Avenatti, the creepy porn lawyer? Oh, yeah. I loved how when uh, they let that guy he specifically requested them not refer to him as a creepy porn lawyer. Yeah. And Tucker Carlson was like, "We will not refer to him as a certain name." <laughs> but all across the all across the bottom of the screen, those headlines were "creepy porn lawyer announces run for president." Creepy porn lawyer does this. Yep. <laughs> and it's like it's that kind of thing that just I love. I love that. I love how he's just down to earth. Like... Yeah, he's just like. Or everyone else is too afraid to tell these people what they're, what's up. He's like, no, um, how could you be so stupid? Yeah. I. I don't know. I feel like uh, we should end these with a Sargon of a Cod quote. Oh, if you have one, go for it. Oh, uh, I hadn't had one at the moment. I was totally do it. <clears throat> I actually did a project in school where we had to, uh, um, we made this like picture thing and then we had to have a, we made a, a poster about ourselves and at the bottom we had a quote that spoke to you. Yeah. And my quote was, uh, Sargon of God. He like, uh, says, there are a lot of horrible people in this world with horrible views. Don't get me wrong, I'm probably one of them. 
And then he went on to, to explain for like two hours in a live stream all of those bad views. Yeah. Which is like, that's just glorious. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm in favor of ending these with a quote from someone. Doesn't necessarily have to always be Sargon, but... He's a good guy, I like Sargon. I do, I just don't like his new situation. Because I don't like sitting down and watching one to two hour videos. I don't watch them, I listen to them. Well, I mean, even when it's going in the background, I can't focus on my reading while I'm doing that. I, um... Oh. Are you subscribed to the Thinkery? Mm, no. Uh, Sargon of Akkad is his main where he posts, like, you know, his big, big videos. Well, the Thinkery... Know. The Thinkery is where he posts his, uh, like, his hot takes on things. Okay. Where he, like, finds an article and reviews it. Like, I, think, I think Mikey just posted a, a Don Lemon one. Oh, the, yeah. the Don Lemon's literally Hitler or whatever. Worst journalist of the year, John Lemon. There's worst journalist of the year. Yeah, I, I did see that, so... Yeah, you should watch John Award, by the way. Put that in the video thing. List of people to watch. Sargon, John Ward, us. Oh yeah, speaking of which, there is a reading list too of books oh. I've read, and I'm trying to get him to build one. Don't do that. I'm not. It'll be like Fifty Shades of Black. I did actually read Fifty Shades of Grey, the first two books. That's so cancerous, Troy. Don't Wait, admit that. You, you know the type of person I am, so it makes sense. Well, yeah, I know. You're gonna be reading anything, Mr. Spice and Wolf, volumes 1 through 20. There's nothing wrong with Spice and Wolf. Yeah, well, I I think there is. And we can agree to disagree. Yeah, um, this is where, like, Dennis Prager would say, I prefer clarity over agreement. Oh, hey, uh, did you hear that, um, right before Gad got banned, that they, uh, they banned lollies? No. <laughs> yeah, they banned lollies. Sargon's woke on it. Uh, that's why. Yeah, apparently, they were, that's why they were banned right yeah. there. So if you look at uh, Sargon did a live stream the other day on his Thinkery channel, yeah. where he just gets a bunch of things about lollies and he's just insulting them the whole way. He's like, "Well, if it was legal, I would genocide you." <laughs> I w I'm gonna have to look that up. <laughs> it was glorious. So, well, anyways, are we ending this now? Yeah. Alright. Alright. So, I guess, um, look us up on YouTube if you thought we were worth it. Fair Studio. Or no. Well, a... I mean, I'm worth it, but maybe not. Maybe yeah. not. Yeah, maybe not me. There's a bit shoot, and there is really a Pornhub, and I'll have the bit shoot and Dude. Pornhub in the comments of the YouTube one. That will probably... You're actually making that. I am. I have the account created, I just need to upload the video to it. That will be glorious, honestly. Um, like, comment, subscribe, 